Okay, just in case. All right, so um, the number method. <clears throat> the number method has been, um, <clears throat> has only been around for a little over 100 years. The number method kind of came into being with the birth of radio. <clears throat> and, and radio was really, you know, kind of in the early 19th century when radio kind of um, kicked in. And so, um, well, the reason why radio was so big was because it was a way to, you know, communicate worldwide, you know, with all kinds of people, you know, obviously it was more focused regionally, you know, and continental oriented, but like, especially AM radio and shortwave radio and things of that sort. So, so what was some of the, the main music in the early 1920s? What was kind of, the yes. style of music that were really yes was the bebop. bebop well really bebop was a little bit later but it was big band you know big but band. big band big dance <laughs> and so when radio came into being you know they they actually um you know had a lot of work because the main reason is they um had uh you know to create arrangements for the, for the radio shows all you know every day and and what happened was uh they would they would create you know i don't know if you guys ever heard of those old radio shows you know where people back in the you know 1910 1920s 1930s 40s you know that's what they did they didn't have tv they would just have big radios where they could dial in things and listen to them and they'd you know they'd sit and listen to music or keep it on all evening you know and they would have just like we had tv shows back in the day where they had uh um, you know, the Ted, Ted Max amateur hour, or, you know, or, uh, they'd have some kind of, uh, dark, dark shadows, you know, kind of mystery or, the, you know, or different kinds of like, um, radio programs that would be on every day and people would listen to them, but then they'd have a lot of like, you know, uh, shows where they would feature artists of the day, you know, and then, and they would like write arrangements for them. And they'd have to sing them. And at the time, at the time in the 20s, 10, 20s, 30s, they didn't have recording. They had radio, you know, and they had really nice mics, but not, I mean, not USB mics, but, uh, <laughs> you know, like kind of the um, big, you know, mostly they had, uh, they had ribbon mics, you know, that they would use big old ribbon mics, kind of like the Bing Crosby style mics, and they would record their radio shows live. I mean, they would just play them live. They didn't even record them. They just would play them live. And so um, they would have these big bands that have to write these charts out for all these, you know, new people every day. And they would, you know, they'd have their hit songs and, and people made money selling sheet music. That's how people made money back in the day. They would, especially in that, you know, era that cause people would want to learn the songs. I don't know if you ever saw music from that period of music. They always had really ornate, you know, covers on them. Yeah. And it was really, uh, you know, it was something you would put on your piano and people go, oh, you got that song, you know, I fell in love with you and, you know, something like that. And, and, they, and that was, uh, you know, the way that they made their money is selling the songs. So these people would be featured on these radio programs and, and they would, you know, create these big band arrangements. Now, have any of you guys played in a big band ever? I know. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, the, the, the music that what happened would be, you know, there's a lot of people in a big band. You know, you usually have, you know, four, you know, saxophones, four trombones, <laughs> four trumpets. You have a rhythm section, guitar, bass, yeah. drums, piano, you know, and uh, sing and singers, too. And in, in this case, they had the singers going on, too. So they would have to write out these sort of like arrangements. So what happened was, the, the, in fact, when I was your age, when I was like 17, 18 in and I, I got to study with a guy who was in his 70s back then. And he actually worked, you know, when he was young for um, for these radio stations. And what he would do is he would write arrangements. And he said it was brutal. They would, they would get the song. They say, okay, here's the song we're going to do today. And then they would take that. And then they would have to, um, you know, score it out. You know, and he would have to make, he'd have to have two full big band arrangements by noon so he would take the song 
write, you know, write out the master like lead sheet for, you know, with all the, okay, this is what the trumpets are going to do. This is what the trombones are going to do. This is what saxes are going to do. Here's what the rhythm section is going to do. They'd have to, and they would give them a pen, you know, and they'd have to do it on what they call onion skin. Onion skin is you can't erase. You just have to get it right. So they sit in a room with those pianos and they'd write these arrangements from like eight to, to noon. Then after, after that, they would take those and then they'd have transcribers and they would write out the music for each individual part, you know, so that the, all the saxes and trombones are all transposed right, da 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 da. And then they'd have to, you know, um, that would take a couple hours. And then they, after that, they'd finally get to rehearse maybe about like three, four o'clock. They'd rehearse the piece and then they'd be on the air at five. <laughs> he said it was brutal and it was every day, you know, that they had to do these kind of things. Well, what happened was in that, in that time, since you had, you know, like, guitarists and keyboard players and bass players you know that were really a part of that instead of you know when you write out chords like when you would you actually write on chords on notation it takes a long time you know it's there, there are a lot of notes so what they did is they created they created a um a shorthand for music you know for to be to be able to to be able to you know to uh to kind of to make it easier and you might have seen some of this already but this is where it came into being. So they would write these, you know, uh, this, I this idea of being able to write extended harmonies because big bands always had, you know, like extended harmonies, more than just triads and things of that sort. So what they did then <clears throat> is, um, you know, they came up with this method and you see it still all the time now, you know, in, in like when you're looking at lead sheets for music or, and, um, and like big band charts and things of that sort. So I'm going to, I'm going to make a comparison. So this sticks with you a little bit more, you know, this idea, you know, I was trying to figure out a comparison, you know, I was thinking, well, you know, cause, cause really the main, you know, types of chords we have, and I'll put this, I'm going to give, I'm going to send you guys this document, but I'll put it, I'll put it in the chat too today, you know, just some of it. And so like, here's, um, you know, this is, they have, we have these kind of types of chords. We have major chords. We have the minor chords, which we're all familiar with. Okay. We have another family of chords called dominant. Okay. Also, you guys should probably, and then, then I have a new family too. One second, let me get this in there. It's called symmetrically weird. Okay. Yeah. And, and those are, these guys and you've, 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 you've probably dealt with them already in some form or another and we'll talk about why they're symmetrical and why they're weird you know soon but i want to get you know this idea so the symmetrically weird are diminished and augmented okay so there you go so those are the the, the symmetrically weird family so i wanted to make a comparison and you probably have noticed all along here, I've had this like lion thing here, just kind of because I like it, but it was kind of fun. So today is the unveiling of the lion. Um, but I, I made a, a, um, a comparison in, in why, you know, I was trying to think of what would be a good comparison, you know, to, um, to think of the four families, because there's really four families, major, minor, dominant, symmetrically weird. Okay, those are the families of sound, you know, the way I would say it. And this is where you need your key chart. And again, so go ahead and pull that out. And if not, you know, um, you're going to, you know how I, when I had, had you originally do the key chart and I had you on the left side, I had the interval method, you know, but then I left the big space for the number method. If you feel like writing that in, you can do that today. If not, then you can just take my doc that I'm sending you and you can, you know, put it on that key chart because it's, you know, super useful, okay, for, you know, being able to do the number method. Okay, so I, I compared, I originally compared the, um, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe I should compare them to the trees, you know, four kinds of trees, you know, but then I was thinking, you know what, people really don't know trees so well, you know, they don't know, you know, they might go, okay, oh, they might know the idea of, like, pinnately veined or palmately veined or, you know, where does wild cactuses fit in or all that kind of stuff, you know? So I figured I need something more practical, something that people can relate to, you know? So what I did is I compared the, uh, I compared the, the families of sound to 
the food groups. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so here we have the major, okay, family. Okay. The major family is, <laughs> again, um, the meat group. Now, you, you can see, okay, I'll, I'll go through these kind of quickly, and then I'll go one at a time. So here's the major here, okay? And then we have the minor family, okay? The breads and cereals, you know, here at the beach, you know, it's a beautiful thing that the dunes are, okay? Have you guys ever gone to the dunes, Warren Dunes in, jo in Michigan? Yeah, yeah. Warren Dunes is one of the best kept secrets in the Midwest. It is a beautiful place. Yeah, it is really, it's, it's got, you know, I mean, you, there's on occasion you can body surf, but mostly it is uh, a beautiful place. So you should look it up. It's right when you get into Michigan, you know, so, okay, there it is, a picture of Warren Dunes. Okay, so uh, with the food groups, the breads and cereals, and here we have the other family the dominant family, which is really kind of dominant these days, is the fruits and veggies. Okay, so the fruits and fruits and veggie band. You can see if you when you I'll, I'll I'm making a recording, so if you guys want this recording, I'll send it to you guys. Um, it's the uh, the fruits and veggies. I, you know, it's funny. How many of you guys grew up seeing Veggie Tales? Any of that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Veggie Tales. It's funny because I had it, these are really old you know, as you can see, but I had a student that actually went on to work for those guys back when I was at JUCO. And I always wonder if, you know, he might have taken some of these ideas because these are uh, my, my, this was pre veggie tales, this, uh, this, this thing <laughs> of, of, of the uh, fruits and veggies. Okay. And the last one was, and again, this is what gives out how old this is, is I, cause I used to call the fourth, the fourth group, the diminished group. Okay, and here they are, and they were the milk products. Okay, as you can see, here's the cheese and the milk and the yogurt doing a concert. Okay, <laughs> so a few people there, kind of like our concerts sometimes. So anyway, um, and the cows are these are cows, by the way, in the in the audience. So, so um, and then we, <laughs> it, it's very silly, but you're gonna remember this, you know, because but see now the interesting thing is like when you think about the food groups now, the food groups they don't go in these four families of you know, meats, fruits and veggies, you know, breads and cereals, and, you know, milk products, they have more, this more, it's more the, like, pyramid. Now, they have, you know, the, you know, proteins, carbohydrates, super carbohydrates, and fats, and things like that. My sister works at a cancer center. She, she's the dietitian. She says, but the four tiers still work. I went, okay, cool. I'll still use this since I got the pictures. So, um, so we'll go back to this. Okay, so on your key chart, Eventually, what you're going to do, you know, it's a lot easier in person to show you what to do. But I usually say put the four, you know, four groups on, you know, the major, you know, the minor, dominant, in the kind of like in a kind of, you know, horizontally like a cross. And so then we're going to fill in some things. On that. Okay, so here's, again, the symbol for major that I use, that, you know, is, um, is a triangle. On occasion, you'll see it like it'll be here. I'll put these, put these in. If I can. Okay. So here's these are like the symbols for major. Oh, I gave me. A, it wouldn't translate my my triangle. That's funny. It gave me a question mark on on the sheet. It actually <laughs> triangle. So because uh, that's the one that I use for like. You know, so, um, but. So sometimes you'll, sometimes you'll even see it a seven with a line through it. Have anybody seen major chords that way? Where it'll, let's say, if a seven, then it has a line right through it? No, okay. Mostly it's either, it's mostly either triangle, M-A-J, or big M. Okay, so now to make a major chord, okay, better than that. Okay, so we're going to do that one. A major chord is... And you, you already know this, and this is where you need the key chart. And when I, when I originally, see, when I originally created the key chart, I did it to teach the number method, okay? So the, the major chord, again, you're going to have to just superimpose that this is supposed to be a triangle. Um, major chord is, as you well know, one, three, five, okay? Now, like a chord like this, a major seventh 
is 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay, so let me, let me kind of play those chords for you, okay? So for example, here I am. Um, let's see. Make sure I see you. Okay, so here I am playing a C chord. Okay, beautiful C chord. Okay, now if I want to make that a major seventh, what would the notes be? What are the one, three, five, seven in key of C? C, E, G, B. Right, so here's C chord, C, E, G. Here's C major seventh. Okay, not a lot of difference. Okay, so it's like hamburger, steak. You know, there you go. Different meat groups, steak. So now, so if I say, for, for example, I told you guys, you know, I'm gonna, once I think it's done here, I'm gonna have a party at my house and I'm gonna have you guys over architecture class, you know, and, and we're gonna cook, you know, burgers on the grill, you know, maybe have a nice like, blueberry pie, you know, have some fries, a good salad, you know, and all kind of stuff like that. Really great, you know, great moment, you know. And then, and so everybody's hyped, you know, we're gonna come over do that. And then, but then on the day of it, I, I go to you and I say, you know what, I, I don't know if I, if I can pull it off. I couldn't, I couldn't find any hamburger. Nobody had hamburger. So I said, would steaks do? And you would go, yeah, 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 steaks are good. You know, and so, so I mean, if you if you eat meat, you know, there you go. So, so, you, so the thing is, you can substitute a steak for a hamburger, right? It's like you can substitute, a, you know, C major for C major seven. Okay, you can. They're in the same. Now, what are the notes in C major seventh ninth? So, if you had that, then you would have the one, three, five, seven, and then the ninth. So, what would that be, John? Uh, C, E, G, B, and D. Yeah. So here you go. Here. So here's a C major ninth kind of chord. You know. Okay. Well, that would be sort of like, you know, pretty nice. That, that would. Be, uh, <laughs> We'll call that like a, 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 a fillet. That's you know, pretty nice, pretty nice. Okay, so how about C major six what you say for that one, Ryan? One, three, five, and six. Uh, C, E, G, and A? Yeah, an A, yeah. So you know, kind of like a pork chop or something like that, you know. How about C, um, C major six, nine, Taryn? That would be one, three, five, six, nine. Uh, ooh. Uh, C G A D. Yeah, let me put those in there for the heck of it, too. So get them all. At a time. All right, C E G A and uh, didn't work. Bigger, goofy. I, I only can do one line at a time in this now. Hmm. So they won't let you do more than one line to add to this. Okay, here's that. Put that in. Put this in. Okay, there we go. And so, so here's that C major six nine. Okay. Okay, that sounds like chicken cordon bleu or something like that. Okay, <laughs> okay. how about um, it's just C major seven thirteenth? What would the notes be in that? That would be one, one, three, five, seven. Somebody working over on one of those places, sir? Yeah, I'm wondering what that is. Yeah, me too. Okay. Yeah, not right here. Is it is it on your end, Deanna? Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Um. So then we have so the uh, C major seventh. 713th. Okay, so what would that be, uh, Graham? C major 713? Yeah. C, E, G, A? Yeah. Kind of like mahi mahi, you know, like the fish kind of. That's pretty nice. Okay, so, all right. Now, what about this one here, major 7th sharp 11? So that would be 1, 5, 1, 3, 5, you know, 7 with the sharp 11. 
Okay. What would that be, Colin, in C major seventh? That would be the C, E, and then it would be an F sharp, right? Yeah, exactly. So it'd be C, E, G, B, F sharp. Okay, listen to that. Okay, so my question is, when is the last time you had leg, leg of lamp? <laughs> Probably never. April. <laughs> not a big fan. Okay, bar, so not very many people are going, yeah, on that one. You know, so it's not, it's, uh, you know, leg of, it's, I like it, you know, some people don't, you know, but it's very, it's a very, you know, uh, rare, you know, people don't use it. And so in some ways, it's kind of like this chord, you know, it's a rare, you know, sound. It's, it's not a often used me, you know, just like, you know, that one or this one or that one, you know, hamburger steaks and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so, so some, some, some um, you know, meats are more common. Okay, so just like some major chords are more common. Okay, so let's go on to minor. Okay, so minor, again, the, the fruits... No, not not the uh, grains, the uh, resin cereals. Excuse me, resin cereals. Okay, so now the minor chords again have have what in them? They have now. See, and this is where it's confusing sometimes from when you're learning the interval method. But this is why one of the reasons again I created the um, the the uh, this key chart because the way it works is this when you're when you're doing when you're when you're using the the to figure it out the minors it's the one the flat three in the five and so it what would that be in the key of c um london Uh, C e flat G. Yeah, C E flat G. So now, when you're doing it, see the interesting thing is you're. This is the kind of trick of the number method. When you when you're doing the number method, you you have to start with the 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 key of not going to the key, not going to the key of C minor. You have to go to the key of C, and then you have to alter it. So you always use the major key to, you know, figure these extensions out. So like in this next one for the minor seventh, you know, regular minor seventh, you would use the one flat three, the flat five, I mean, one flat three, five and flat seven. So what would the notes be in C minor seventh, Deanna? I still got like a whole bunch of stuff going on over here. Oh, okay. Um, uh, for... Uh, C, E flat, G, B flat. B flat, right, right. And so what you're doing, <clears throat> what you're doing in that is you're actually using the numbers at the top of the key chart to flat from. So if I said, what are the notes in the key of um, A minor seventh, Colin? What? Yeah, what are the notes in the key of, or in this chord A minor seventh? A minor seventh will be A, C, E, G. Yeah. How about notes in um, C minor seventh? No, we did that one already. G minor seventh, Ryan. Uh, G minor seventh. G B flat D F. Uh, yes. Right. So, okay. Let me play those for you a bit. Okay. Again, this is trickier online than it is in real life. So, okay. So here's C minor. C minor seventh. Okay, again, C minor. C minor seventh. So it's like here's white, here's wheat. Okay, kind of different kinds of breads. Okay, not very different, but it's a little bit different. Okay, so we have the different kinds of you know breads there. Okay, so now C minor sixth would be. Oh, let's do this one. C minor seventh ninth. Okay, so what would that be, um, Evan? Um, uh, C, E flat, G, D. 
No, because in the in the in the minor sevenths, see, whenever you use minor in terms of the minor family, you always mm -hmm. have a flat seventh. Okay, so and then you then you so if you have a one, a flat three, a five, a flat seventh in the key of C, what is that? What is one? C flat three. E flat. Five. G. Flat seventh. E flat. Yeah, and then the ninth is what? D. D. Okay, so oh. yeah, so you're just adding a ninth to the chord. It sounds like this. Okay, kind of like sourdough or something like that. Okay, so th there's one. Okay, here's another one. Minor sixth. Okay, so if you just had the minor sixth in there. Okay. Now uh, this one, you know, again, you're going from the major key. So C minor, C minor six is going to be what notes, Ryan? Uh, C, E flat, G, A. A, yeah. It's kind of a strong one, you know. When you hear it, you know, it's kind of like rye bread or something like that, you know, kind of strong. Okay, here's another one. Minor seventh, eleventh. So that would be the one, the flat three, the five, the flat seventh, and the eleventh. So what would that be, Graham? Say it again. <laughs> okay. The minor seventh here, I'll put it up on the on the thing too. So you can see it. And we'll put the eleven in there. Okay. Hang that. Okay, so it's the one, the flat three, the five, flat seventh, and the eleventh. What would that be in C minor seventh? Um, C, E flat, G, B flat, F. Right, so it sounds like this. Okay, let's see. Uh, that sounds like a you know cinnamon roll to me. I don't know. Seems like okay. All right, all right. Now let's try it. Now the another one. C minor seven thirteenth. We'll add that one to the mix. Let's see. I'll, I'll put that in there, and that will be this. I'll put it the formula up for it. Okay. Again, you're, this is why I. This is the reason why I created the key chart in two octaves, so you can do these other octaves of of um, these chords, these extended chords. So if you have uh, the minor seven flat, the minor seventh with the 13th, so what would that be, uh, Mike, in C minor seven 13th? That would be C, E flat, G, B flat, and G. No, what's the 13th again? Look at that again. The 13th is, oh, that's, uh, let's see. A. No, it's A. Sir? Yeah, it's A. So it's C, E flat, G, B flat, and you go to the 13th note in the key of C, which is A, right. Okay, so you have to use the numbers at the top, you know, to get these chords to be able to figure them out. So that would be definitely pumpernickel, that one there. So, <laughs> okay, uh, like, okay, let's try another one. Let's do another kind of uh, extended harmony one. For minor let's try uh, we're going to do a minor seventh no not minor seventh we'll actually call it minor six nine this is a pretty intense one okay <laughs> let's go let me put that in there okay again these are you're going to when you hear these you're going to really say oh yeah those sound like jazz chords you know and that's exactly what they were for they were for big jazz groups back in the day and they still are used in you know like when you're writing studio stuff out okay for different kinds of players Okay, so here's the minor six nine. So that one would be what notes, uh, Taryn, in C? Uh, C E flat. Uh, why do I have? Sorry. <laughs> C E flat G A D. A D. Right. Okay. So let's see. Let's kind of find one of those. That's kind of a wacky chord. Okay. When you hear that, listen. That sounds like a big band chord. Yeah. You know. You know, so that would be like a Lithuanian rye or something like that. Okay, so uh, so then we have sometimes we'll actually have chords like this, um, where you have a minor seventh. We had them already, the minor seventh flat fives, 
uh, chords, which are um, we, we also called half diminished chords, but that's the number method version of this is this. Here, I'll put it on there. Okay. Boom. Okay, so it's like that. So it's one flat three, flat five, flat seven. So what would the notes be in that, um, Jer Jeremiah? Can you repeat that? Okay, yeah, the C minor seventh flat five. Okay, so it has, you, again, you're using, you're using the notes from the key of C, the numbers at the top. So mm -hmm. the one in C is what? C. Okay, flat three is? A e flat. And then flat five is? G flat. And flat seven? B flat. B flat, Or right. Yeah, B flat. So it sounds like this. Again, another Lithuanian rye chord here for you. Okay. Okay. So there's there's the minor chord. So again, the most common ones are going to be minor, minor seventh, maybe minor ninth. You know, you're gonna you're gonna hear those kind of you know extended harmonies and chords. Okay. Again, these are from that big band era, the jazz era, but but they are connected to what we do now. Okay. So let's do the dominant. The dominant is probably of the most varied kind of sounds okay so now when you see dominant chords um the idea with dominant chords is it, it looks like this um there's no there's no marker for them you know for dominant that just says it's just nothing so if you see a chord that says c seventh or g ninth or b flat 13th you know those are what they call dominant chords And the thing about dominant chords is they're a lot like major chords, except for one thing. They have, they have, or two things. They have four notes and they also have a flat seventh. Okay. So if we we're doing like C seventh um, chord, what would the notes be in that, John? Uh, C, E, G, B flat. Right. So there's your um, dominant seventh and here's the ninth chord. Okay, so it sounds like this. Well, first of all, I'll have you somebody do it. Let's, um, Graham, tell me what the notes are in the C seventh ninth chord. C E G B flat D D right. So we have apples and oranges. Okay, both fruits. Okay, there's a lot of fruits, a lot of veggies. Okay, so. We'll, we'll do, so here's a chord for you, 13th, 7th, 13th chord. Sometimes we'll see it just written as 13th, okay? So what would the notes in that chord be, Evan? Uh, C, E, G, um, B flat, and then A? Yeah. Okay, a little banana there for you. Okay. Um, All right. Here's another chord um, that you'll see in a lot of times jazz groups. It'll be this one. It's called seventh sharp eleven. Okay, what would that? What would the notes be in that, um, Colin? It'd be uh, E E G B flat. And the sharp eleven. Ah. No. You have to raise it. F sharp. F sharp. So it's okay. Another big jazz chord there. Yeah. Okay. What would that be? Kiwi, probably. Kiwi. All right. All right. Kiwi on that one. And okay, here's one. This is one you'll hear. You've heard before, I'm sure. This is now. Sometimes you'll see. This is the thing about the about the dominant chords. They have these things where they'll sharp things or flat things in them. And see, and that's where if you were in a jazz group, like for example, in a jazz band, you know, um, when, they, when they have the scores, whether you're a keyboard player or a bass player or a, a you know, guitarist, they'll have the scores that'll say like E7 sharp nine or F flat, I mean, F, uh, you know, 713. They'll, they'll have the, the, these kind of types of chords will be in there. And a lot of times they're really quick. They move really fast. So what would the notes be in C7 sharp nine? Jeremiah. Um, be C, 
right? E. Right. G. Right. B. But you have to flat the seventh. B flat. Okay. And sharp. then D sharp. Perfect. Okay. So. Kind of Hendrixy. Okay. So that would be kind of like a. Um, what would we say that one would be? uh grape <laughs> maybe so I'll say yeah bird. yeah there you go okay and then then there's one let's see then they sometimes will have them a little bit weirder where they'll have you know actually they'll have the um, additives where they're flatting the notes okay so for example here's one c7 flat nine okay so what would the notes be? do you have your can you turn yourself on um uh deanna what's the notes in that one uh, C, E, G, B flat, and D flat. Right, right. It's kind of like a, a strong fruit. Let's see. Mango. That's kind of strong. Yes. Even, even though mango is great, but it's kind of strong. Okay. So then you can have sometimes chords like this. You'll have chords where they'll have, um, let's do the, this one. Okay. Um, seventh, oops, wrote it wrong. Okay, that let me got the wrong thing on that. Let's see, let me redo that sharp five. I wanted okay, and we'll put it in there, right? Okay, so what would be C7 sharp five, London? Uh, C, E, G. And G sharp though, because it's oh, G sharp. sharp. Yeah. Oh, G you know what? My my fault. I wrote it wrong. That was my fault. Excuse me, guys. Yeah, this goofy thing. I hate doing it this way. Okay, back up, back up. Always, you always conclude this. Well, it's kind of a good mistake, because what happens is when you're doing these sorts of things, you're um. You always put the flats or sharps before the number. So that one here was, you know, wrong, but the 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 one I just put in was correct. So let's do that again. C the C seven sharp five. C E G sharp B. But the flat it's oh man I did it again <laughs> I did it again I was just about stupid to say something. stupid all right okay let me get it again stupid all right <laughs> I used to have a friend he was from Tehran. And uh, and he, <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you this. It's kind of a silly one. He he had a his, his, he had a like a nephew, and and he would come over and stay with him back in the day, and um, when he was real little, and he used to call him stupid piglet. <laughs> <laughs> and he go, you, you stupid piglet! What are you doing? And then so now when he <laughs> when he got older, he just said, Uncle. I miss you. Would you call me a stupid piglet again? <laughs> so anyway, That's ridiculous. These are, yeah, it is. This is a stupid <laughs> piglet program. So anyway, okay, so let's uh, do this next one. Let's see. Here's one. It's called sharp. This is pretty wild. It's a sharp five and a flat and a sharp nine. Let's do that one. Okay. So. Let's see, put it in the thing here. Okay. One, three, sharp five, flat seven, sharp nine. What would the notes be in that, Ryan? Um, C, E, G sharp, uh, B flat, and D sharp. Yep, listen. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's, called, definitely, that's a definitely a big band <laughs> chord right there, you know. So so that that has uh let's see what we'll call that one. Um one of those star fruits, you know. I don't know if you ever seen those at the store. They don't have them very often, you know, but they're pretty pretty cool looking, they're pretty tasty. Mm -hmm. Okay, star fruit chord. So now there's sometimes here sometimes you'll you'll see this. I don't know if you've seen it like in uh on uh, in the like internet things you know like transcriptions or different um 
kinds of, uh, you know, music notation where it says seven suspended. Okay. Yeah. Now we've, we kind of touched on it already from the interval method. So seven suspended would be you substitute the four for the three. Okay. So if you had a C seventh suspended, Evan, what would the notes be in that? Uh, C, F, G, and then B flat. Right. And they, <laughs> and they usually always resolve down like that, you know. You know, that kind of thing. See, that was one of the things back in the day is why I didn't know why the fruits and veggies were actually in the same group. Well, in, in the new one, they actually are in the same line, but they're separated fruits, veggies, you know. And so that, so in a sense, these are kind of like the veggies more. Okay. So this would be like the tomatoes instead, you know, which could be maybe okay, suspended. Okay. So then we, you'll see chords like this too in the suspended. Okay. This one here. Is tomato a fruit or a? Yes. Yeah. See, but it fits with me. It could be either really, you know, uh, it works out good. Okay. So we have the seventh, ninth suspended. Okay, so what would the notes be in that, John? C, F, G, E flat, and D. Yeah, it's one of the nicest chords on guitar. You can just go like this. Oh, nice. Okay. Easiest chord. Okay, so it's nice. Okay, that's a nice, uh, I would say lettuce or something like that. Okay, and here's one. Here's another one that's kind of in way... Um, Nice too. It's very it sounds hard, but it's easy. Okay, so it would be C seventh, ninth, thirteenth suspended. Holy mackerel! Look at all those notes. Okay, so what would the notes be in that uh, Jeremiah? Uh, one. Which is C? I said one. C. <laughs> uh, F. Right. G. Right. Uh, B flat. Correct. D and A. Perfect. Okay. Again, not much harder than the other one. Again, a lot of these are kind of just like adding enhancements to, to some basic chords. But again, when you'll see them in, you know, kind of in a, in a big band or jazz context, you know, be, they'll be written out, you know, from the root note like that. Okay. So then the last one, again, and these go quick because these are, um, really kind of symmetrically weird and, and we've really have you know have kind of already done some of these um, the, the the family of sound and this one is the first one is diminished and so like the diminished chord has this kind of sound you know it's the one three it's the one flat three flat five so what would the notes be in the one flat three flat five um, Mike. All right. Um, for C. Yeah. It would be C, E flat. Right. And G flat. Right. See, but more often they're used in this capacity as a diminished seventh. So it goes like this. And so it's a one flat three, five double flatted seventh or sixth. Okay. So Taryn, what would the notes be in that? Uh, C, E flat, G flat, and then B double flat, or technically A. a. Right, right. Yeah. So it's again, it's that. D, no. All right, the train. Totally. <laughs> okay, so those are, you know, those pretty silly chords like that. Again, you know, some, uh, and again, my old group there would be, you know, some maybe, uh, uh, some strong like Swiss treat cheese or something like that. Okay, so then the last one in the symmetrically diminished is this one, the augmented chord. And this is really again very silly. Um, I, I I usually use when I use augmenteds, um, I I usually use a plus sign, but I just noticed today this, and this has happened just this morning. Again, more goofiness. Um, it's the, this, these are the uh, like symbols for augmented, 
and but my plus sign is broke on my keyboard. I can't actually put it on there. So I have to go and look for a document that has a plus sign and then import it. So uh, <laughs> goofy. So anyway, augmented would be just the one, three, and the sharp five. So what would that be, Graham? In C? Yeah. One, or er, C, E, G sharp. Yeah. So it's... You know, that song from the Beatles, basically, you know, that kind of sound. And again, there, I'll talk about it someday soon, why they're symmetrical. The be easiest way to kind of see that is if you took your key chart, or those neck charts that I did if you're a guitarist and highlight out a couple of these, like diminished seventh chords and, and also the augmented chords. But again, they're, they're another family of sound. They are kind of symmetrical and they're, and they're very weird sounding. So, okay, I'll send this document fixed to you. Hopefully I can find a plus sign somewhere and, um, and send that to you. But I've got, you know, a couple other things to, you know, to, you know, talk about with this idea of the food groups here and things. So tell me this. Um, since we had like all our, the jokes were all food jokes today, which was good. Um, what's the difference between a grape and a pork chop. Um, what isn't the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me, what do you? What is the difference? If you were going to say, somebody says, okay, what's the difference between a grape and a pork chop, Ryan? What would you say? Uh, one's a fruit, one's a meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally different. It's a dumb question. It's like, you know, one's this juicy bulbous thing grows on a vine. The other one is in a pig. You raise the pig, you know, kill the pig, you know. <laughs> You clean it, you know, cut it into a pork chop, and then, you know, put it on a grill. So there you go. It's, they have totally different genetic codes. So just to like in my metaphor, so when, you, when you're thinking in terms of these things, like in major, for example, you know, they have different genetic codes to create these, um, you know, chords. For example, major has, it has a three and a seven, you know, natural like that. Okay, and, and then again, you know, I'll I'll put these on the dock, and then minor has what? It has what are the kind of the the things that give way, you know, like a minor, um, that make a thing minor in terms of the number method. Uh, flat three. Right, and what else? Flat five. No. Flat seven. You know, and a, yeah, and a flat, flat seven. seven. Yeah, because mostly you'll see, you know, when you're dealing with, um, oops. Ah, come on, <laughs> All right. So when you're dealing with minor, it's a flat three and flat seven. On occasion, you'll see chords like this. You know, I'll put one in where it's, there'll, there'll be a chord like, uh, here, I'll make this up, this one here. Okay, you might, oh, it's going to give you that goofy box again. So it'll, um, so you, you'll see a chord, it'll say C minor major seventh. Okay, so what would the notes be in that chord uh, once, Mike? For the uh, C minor, minor, yeah, which is the one flat three five and natural seventh. Okay, um, C. Right. E flat. Right. G. Right. B. Right. And so here it is. Listen to it. You know, it's not as good as this. I mean, it seems more or less tense. That one is, you know, you'll hear that kind of chord, but it's, it's, it's again, it's a very, you know, out there kind of thing. So then dominant chords, what's the thing that define them? Flat seven. Flat seven. Flat seventh, right, exactly. So they have, the dominants have the three and the flat seventh. Okay, and then the diminished are, are, are what? What are the things that kind of define those? Flat three, flat five. Right, flat three, flat five. Those are the, those are the basic ones. And then if you have the diminished seventh, you know, you'll have the actual, you know, the real crazy thing. Double uh, flat seventh. Yeah, double flat seventh like that. Okay, then augmented, it's just the three 
and the you know sharp five. So again, those are the things that like make those families what they are. So when I say what is it that makes a major seventh chord? Well, every major seventh chord has a natural three and a natural seven. Every minor, for the most part, has a flat three and a flat seventh. On, a, on occasion, you use the minor major seventh, but it's not that common. The dominant seventh always has a natural three and a flat seventh, except for when you're using suspended, you know, because the suspended, you know, actually substitutes the four, but it still kind of is in that dominant family. And so it's doing this thing again, you know, one, four, five, flat seven. And then the, then the diminished and augmented are very much, you know, as like I said, they're weird. They have the flat threes, flat fives for diminished and, and then augmented as the natural three sharp fives. And again, I'll put this in a doc for you so you can do it. I usually have you write this out on the back of the key chart for the number method, you know, because what I'll do is, I'll, you know, I'll send you like a little exercise sheet, say spell these chords. And what I mean is what are the notes in those chords? You know, so right now we are doing everything in key of C. So in conclusion, I'll, I'll say this is a, another goofy metaphor. I'll leave you with this. You guys will probably all have lunch after this too. So um, I have a new recipe for pizza. It's like Brussels sprout pizza. And you go, oh gosh, ooh, man, my stomach kind of is weird even just thinking about it. So, so like, so, I mean, it's not like common, you know, you know, it'd be like, it would be uh, if you had like, say for example, you know, like a country song, you know, and like if this is the Brussels sprout chord right here, you know, you know, there it is, the Brussels sprouts, you know, the chord. So it'd be if, you know, doing a country song, it's kind of, okay, regular. So you got, here's your, you know, fried chicken kind of going on. And then you got, you know, you know, your uh, fries, you know, nice salad. And then you got your Brussels sprouts, you know. It, it, it doesn't really fit yeah. <laughs> you know you know brussels sprouts don't fit on pizza you know it just doesn't it just doesn't work you know so but say for example i had you know a nice pork roast okay there's my pork roast cord okay and then i had you know mashed potatoes and gravy okay and then I had a nice salad okay with a nice vinaigrette dressing and then I had Brussels sprouts with cheese sauce, lots of cheese sauce. Kind of fits in that context, right? Okay, there you have it, the number method. Okay, so I'll, say, I'll, I'll make that into a you know, video. If you want me to put it on YouTube or you want me just to send it to you? It, the way it works is I have to I have to use um, we transfer since uh, Colin turned me on to that one and then basically you have to download it you only get a certain amount of time to download things too but I, you know what maybe I will I'll, maybe I'll put this on YouTube too and you know so then that way you can kind of have it as a link we'll make it into a video and okay so I'll send you the document this Wednesday same time exactly same time we're going to talk about the families of scales. Okay. Right. The families of scales are going to work similar to the two <laughs> groups, major, minor, dominant, symmetrically weird. Okay, so we're, we're going to go through those kind of things. And again, hopefully your brain will be full by then again, too. So go fill your bellies, and we'll see you Wednesday at 1130. Right. Thank see you. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye.